thank you for joining us. So today I thought we would use some blocks and um, we'll do some chest opening work. We'll, we'll try to work through the thoracic spine and get some width across the shoulders. And, you know, cause a lot of us are sitting and working in <laughs> computers or in chairs. And then we often don't forget to do little mini stretches every now and then. So let's begin. We start with the blocks, the, the long ways. You can come down, and these are big blocks, and so if you have little softer blocks, they might be nice for this pose. But I'm bringing my arms out to the side, and then if you're okay straightening the legs, you actually can you know, get a little bit of abdominal work here and a little bit of leg work here. And for me, this is a little bit high, but it still feels okay. It's almost like my head is, you know, a little bit like that. Like I might take a cushion or a blanket and put it under my head here. And then You really want to move the breath so that it widens that rib cage and comes up and widens at the tips of the collarbones here that you're really creating space and getting a little bit of lift where the thoracic spine comes towards the chest. So often our spine has, our spine does have natural curls, but often we, with our modern lifestyle, we lose a little bit of those natural curl curves or they go the opposite direction. But if you need to keep the feet on the floor, knees bent, that's okay too. And this might be something you just slowly, gradually work your way into, depending on the length of your neck, depending on what your chest is like. But you do want to make sure that you're not overarching the rib cage. You want to really feel that the abdomen really settles down towards gravity towards the ground. And then just, you might want to bend the feet to come up. We're going to do this one that I really like, <laughs> where you have one block supporting your head. I mean, if you only have one block, you could actually use your hands to support your head for the next pose. So I'll show a couple of variation possibilities. So the next pose is putting the block on the diagonal. And this part is, is long ways and it comes right, right close, the, the top of it comes near where the shoulder blades are. And then with this other block, I just rest my head here. Now, if you didn't have the other block, you could interlock the fingers and just support the head here. And you'd get a little slightly different stretch because you'd get more stretch through the armpits. But it would be important to really support the head and the neck here. If you've got the block, you can bring the arms down and we can go through some arm variations. You can inhale the arms up and then bring them overhead. They may not go too far. A couple of breaths here. 
and you can bend the elbows and place the hands on the side of the blocks and point the elbows up to the ceiling. And this would be like headstand preparation. And hopefully you can feel how long your neck is, how much space you have in your neck here. And for me, this feels really good. I really like this pose. And you can bring your arms back down. And then coming up, you just want to lift the head off and just bring the blocks to the side. And then just come down on your back for a second. And then the, the feet, uh, put the feet on the floor, bend the knees, and just notice what you notice in the chest, in the shoulder area. And then we'll just do a few abdominal things where you bend the knees, straighten the feet up. And if you find it useful, you can place the hands under the head by interlocking the fingers. So we'll do a couple of these and then we'll add a little bit more challenge and you can modify if the challenge is too much. So the next time you bend the knees in, just straighten those heels if you can to 90 degrees. If you can't, it can be a little bit lower, but don't go higher. So either be at 90 or a little bit lower. So if you're able to be at 90, you can feel how the lower back really presses into the mat. And perhaps this is easy and you don't feel too much abdominal work here. Maybe you do. The more you engage the legs, the more you'll feel in the abdominal. And then bend the knees here, and we're gonna to go to 60 degrees. So basically this is 90, 60, and then 30. And then just see how that responds into your abdominals, really press through those heels. And then bend the knees into the chest and press those heels into 30 degrees towards the floor. And then bend the knees back in. And you can like windshield wipe here a little bit just to release any tension. And then we will go the opposite direction. So we got the knees bent and we're going to start at 30. Bending the knees into the chest, coming back to 60. Bending the knees back, you go up to 90. And of course, in your own practice, you can develop more repetitions in this pose if you'd like. And then just exhale as long as you can all the way down to the floor and then release the arms and the legs if that's okay in your back you can still have the feet bent up like this if it's not and then roll over to your side and bring the blocks right here and again you know, if you don't have blocks at home, if, you know, if you have books, I mean, I suppose in the olden days, we used to have dictionaries and thesauruses. So we have these big, thick books. And maybe people today don't have big, thick books, unless you have an art book. But books could, you know, be used as blocks. So there's so many things around that can substitute as yoga blocks. So you're going to bring the knees back here and we're just going to come into upward dog this way so not putting a lot of pressure on the legs and you just want to slowly move the chest forward as best you can 
You want to really engage those abdominals here. And you press the hands down so it engages the shoulder blades. So you don't want to be rolling the shoulders. You want to have that lift so the collarbones are wide. And then with the hands on the blocks, you can come back into big toes together, knees wide. And with the hands on the blocks, it just gives you more space for the arms. And you can really feel into the length here, into the side body back into the sit bones. And then inhale, come up. And then your, your knees are slightly behind your hips. And then you're going to slowly lift the chest between the forearms here, keeping the palms open, engaged, really pressed into the blocks, lifting the chest. And then exhale, going back into big toes together, knees wide. And then for the next one, we're going to engage the legs. So one way to come into this is to straighten one leg out and really press into those hands and then slowly straighten the other leg out. So you're in plank and then see if you can just move from the chest, bringing it forward, pressing, really engaging the legs here and then come into downward facing dog with the hands on the floor. So when I use the blocks, it feels like it gives me more space with the arms, the hands, and the legs, especially if I bring them between the blocks. And then again, inhale, slowly come to plank. So feel what you need to do in your body to really engage the legs, the abdominals, bringing the chest through. And then exhale to downward facing dog. And then drop the knees down. Just thought about doing it, doing this way. Now you can take the blocks together like this, or if you've got them, you want to bring them up higher, you can. We're going to bring the elbows on top and then bring the head down. So you just want to do what gives you the most stretch in the shoulders here. If you had them down lower, you'd be doing the pose like this. And I'm finding if I bring it higher and I stack them, bring those elbows forward, I get more stretch, but it's going to be depend on you and your shoulders. And then slowly release that pose with the blocks back. And then place the hands here and come again into plank. So maybe extend the other leg first. So last time I did the right, now I extend the left leg. And then I'll extend the right leg. And then I'll inhale, slowly come into plank. I mean, upward facing dog. And then roll back into downward facing dog. Now, sometimes if you've got pretty solid blocks, it's nice to feel that edge of the palm back on the edge of the block. It might actually give you something might feel like you have a little more leverage to push back into the legs. And then from here and downward dog, see if you can bring one leg into three legged 
So what you're going to do is bring it straight up. You're not going to want to open up the hips. You're, right now, we're going to keep the hips level. And then bend the knee, place that foot between the blocks. Now, can you feel how having space for your hands might give you a little bit more space in the shoulders here? And then as you stabilize the feet, see if you can slowly lift the arms up and come into Virabhadrasana 1 or Lunge Warrior. And a couple of breaths here. Really extend through that back heel so that the whole front thigh is engaged here. And then slowly Bring that torso long. See if you can feel that length. And then the hands down to the block. And then bring that right leg into three-legged. And the left leg into the downward facing dog. Now remember that if you need breaks because of your shoulders, you can always go in big toes together, knees wide. But if you can stay in downward dog, really work the front thighs and the abdominal. And then inhale that left leg up. And you slowly bend the leg through, hands on the block. You press that foot between the blocks and then you really engage that back leg so you really press through that heel and then inhale the arms up a couple of breaths here really lifting the chest And then you slowly keep engaging that leg, come forward. See if you can really feel that control. And then the hands to the block. And then you can slowly bring the back, left leg back to three-legged and into downward dog. And here's where you can go into big toes together, knees wide. Or if you really want some work, you can inhale into plank, exhale there, inhale to upward, and exhale back to downward. But again, if you need a couple of breaths in Adamuga Varasana, then take that. And then inhale, come back to downward dog. And then on your next inhale, lift the right leg into three-legged, bending the leg, bringing the foot between the blocks. Now this time, the back foot, you're just going to turn that heel slightly. You're really just going to press those feet in so you engage the legs. And then see if you can really bring the upper body up into warrior two pose. And as you windmill the back arm, see if you can, again, come slowly forward with a bit of control, then bring the hands down and inhale the right leg into three-legged, back into downward facing dog. And then inhale the left leg into three-legged, slowly bending that leg through Then you place the back heel down really press through those feet engaging those legs as you float the upper body up into warrior two pose a couple of breaths here really looking over the front hand pressing into those feet And then as you windmill the back arm through, 
slowly come forward as you're leaning forward and then bring the hands down and lift the left leg to three-legged dog and again if you need Adamukha Varasana for facing hero pose do that if you want more physicality you can inhale the plank exhale there inhale to upward exhale to downward and have a few breaths here that's still working for you and then inhale the right leg up slowly bring it through and then you're going to press the back foot down so then you can take one of your blocks if you want it higher or in a different position and you can keep the hand there for Paj Bokanasana. And then the top arm can come straight up or it can come up and over. Couple of breaths. And then as you start to turn the body over again, slow it way down, then bring the hands down, turn the back foot in, and inhale the right leg up into three-legged dog. Of course, I have to readjust my blocks because <laughs> they slipped a little. And then inhale that left leg up, bending it through the blocks, place the foot down, and then whatever you need for the other block, place the hand on for Pajvokanasana. It's got three levels, you know, so you can come a little bit higher if you need to. And then top arm can come up or up and over. Pajvokanasana, side angle lateral pose. And as you slowly pivot around the body again, see if you can hold it for a few breaths. Bring the hands down. Bring the left leg up into three-legged. And come into downward dog for a few breaths. Or you can do Adamukha Varasana or inhale plank, exhale there, inhale to upward, exhale to downward with a couple of breaths here. And then inhale that right leg up. Bending the leg through the blocks. Now, because of my space, I don't want to go too much further, but you've got the blocks here. You can bring them up to their highest point and come into this version of Warrior Three. So you've got the hands on the blocks. You really want to lift that leg up. You want to try to be in like a T shape. then you can place the blocks down to press that leg back to the floor and inhale that right leg up and come into downward facing dog and then again as you inhale the left leg up and bring it through then you can lift your blocks up to the higher level and then you just want to slowly lengthen forward really engage the lower leg and really press through the heel of the upper leg and the whole ball of the foot you can really lengthen that leg and then as you bend the leg down, place the blocks down. You 
swing the left leg up into three-legged, back down into downward dog. So you know what your choices are here. You want to go full on, inhale to plank, inhale to upward, and then exhale to downward. And then just come down to your knees and have a couple of breaths in Adha Mukha Varasana, forward facing hero pose, big toes together, knees wide. And then inhale, come up. And I think I'll show you this from the side. So we're gonna do camel pose and you put the blocks right by your ankles so that you have something to put your hands down when you bring your palms down just trying to remember the hands again okay so we'll bring the, the palms down with the fingers pointing backwards but to start the pose you can bring the hands on the hips just make sure that the chest is wide and you just start here and just slowly lift the chest up you just look up to the ceiling you're trying to push the hips and the thighs forward and if you can reach the hands to the blocks then you can use that to press the hands to get that lift And then lift the chin to the chest. And here's where you can place the blocks underneath you so you can sit down into Thunderbolt Pose. And this is where you can really engage the shins on the floor, bring the inner ankles into the blocks. And you give yourself quite a, a nice seat, you know? Um, where you, you can really get feel that length in the spine so that you're really engaging those core muscles here to support you in sitting. And then hopefully you don't have bad knees or anything. And, and this pose can be done with more height if you need that. And then again, come up again, and again take those blocks the outside of your ankles and again bring the hands to your lower back here and you it's like you use those hands to press the pelvis forward and you're and you can actually imagine that you're pressing the skin down towards the sit bones and you lift that chest up and then you can bring the hands to the blocks and really push forward. So you're not putting so much weight into the hands, but you're using that body forward as a way to give you opening in that chest. And then inhale, slowly come up. And again, sit in Thunderbolt Pose. So I'll face this direction in Thunderbolt Pose. Yeah, I thought we were running out of time. <laughs> so you're trying to keep as best as you can your thighs parallel with each other. You don't want them to be out like this because if you do that you can just test that out you'll start to feel oh, I would think I don't know I feel it like I have no support here but as soon as I bring them here I, I can really feel that spinal lift and then we'll do eagle arms so bring that right elbow under the left and you can play a little bit with really squeezing the arms together if you need to do it this way 
you can bring the hands here and then you can sort of lift the elbows up for the stretch or press them down for a stretch just see where you get the stretch now in eagle arms here if you could do it fully you just give space between the elbows and the chest and probably feel a little bit of stretch between the shoulder blades. And then if you want to go a little deeper, you can lift the chest up here. Just a tiny back bend. And then slowly bring that down. Release the arms. And then swing the left one under the right. Again, the modification is hands on the shoulders, lifting the elbows up if that's giving you a little bit of stretch. You know, you can sort of play around with the mobility in your shoulders there. And if you're able to get your hands or at least, you know, start to get this way, uh, start to bring things close together and you want a little bit more, first you bring the elbows away from the shoulders. And then you can inhale, lift up the chest. Release it and release it down. And then we'll just come into a couple of breaths in the happy baby before we go into a Shavasana or feet up the wall. So depending on what you have with you, you can just come down simply on the mat and hold the feet and you can roll around a little bit if you want a little bit of massaging in your spine. You can also have the hands on the outside of the feet and really press the thighs towards the floor and just stay here. You can also bring the chin towards the chest so you have a little bit more of a rounded spine and stay in that position for a few breaths. And then whichever Shavasana or feet at the wall you've chosen or feet on the chair, give yourself space to do that and let yourself settle into whatever pose you chosen that feels right for your body in this moment. Sometimes if it's morning and you're wanting to be more awake, you might be less apt to do something like feet up the wall, but feet up the wall can also be energizing. So don't feel like you can't do that early in the day. And then whatever position you're in, just allow yourself to settle. And just take a moment to notice how your chest feels, perhaps how the collarbones are feeling. sensations in your armpits and noticing shoulder blades and then that space between the shoulder blades. And then as you notice how that part of the body is, may begin to notice how the rib cage are, are are they settling and moving with the breath how about the throat and the neck And how do the sensations in the whole shoulder girdle carry down through the pelvic girdle and the legs and the feet? And how do they 
down the arms into the fingertips. And then also, how do they come up the neck, through the neck and throat to the head? What's the relationship to the whole spine? that run through your body. The bones are curved, there's no straight line. There's a little bit of movement that maintains your equilibrium. Just feel your skin coming smooth over the shapes of your bones. into your hands, your feet. You might want to do a nice big stretch. Slowly rolling to your right side. To sitting. See it throughout the day. You can, you know, just do some little rolling, open the chest, maybe you bring the shoulders in, just play a little bit with that movement and see if you can find a little more mobility in that thoracic spine and through the chest. And have a beautiful day or evening.
thank you for watching and joining us. Namaste.